Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 as Germany starting in 1935. We are in 1939 and we have a fleet battle. Well, cross fingers we have a fleet battle. It actually said cruiser engagement or cruiser action or something on the pop-up battle screen before forces were deployed. So in my mind, there's three possibilities. Number one, it's another fizzle and the Soviet Union pops up a couple of lame destroyers or something, which our fleet crushes. Or number two, it says what it is on the tin. It is a cruiser action. Admittedly, we've deployed three battle cruisers to this cruiser action, and they have a couple of their new Molotov heavy cruisers. And that would be very imbalanced, but, you know, victory points and hopefully some prestige uh, could be ours. Or it could be the big one, and some or all of their battle fleet and their heavy cruisers may have deployed. We can only hope. I had a suggestion from um, Clarky Kent, uh, who I tip my hat to, that a pre battle checklist would be helpful. And you know what? I'm forever forgetting to do something or other as I start a battle, despite my best efforts. So thanks for that. He's not going to see this for months. He's like on episode 68 of France 1920 series. But anyhow, thanks, Clarky. So here is the checklist I would suggest you go through. So time of day, i.e. when is there going to be a change from daylight to dusk and night, from nighttime to dawn and day. That's the crucial. How much space do you have with good long visibility? How much time do you have to suffer with restricted visibility? The battle time length. So how many minutes is this battle meant to last for? Yes, battles can go longer than advertised, but that's a good guide. The visibility, i.e. the range, the sighting range that you've got. The wind direction, both for in gunnery smoke interference and for air operations, i.e. which way do carriers have to go in order to launch their aircraft. Any sea state restrictions or flight restrictions in force, limiting air operations, limiting uh, ship speed. Uh, zooming out to see your location and see where the various ports and uh, air bases, where minefields are plotted, coastal batteries, or torpedo boats even, and where you can see independent ships sailing, either merchant ships or convoy escorts. And then setting your game speed. I like to set it to max and then just, you know, it goes down as battle engages and it goes back up again when uh, battle is disengaged. So that's like the, the game side of it. And then over here, we have the more battle side of it. So first of all, go through your order of battle. See which toys you've got to play with. Note if there's a battle objective, you know, bombard a particular coastal site, sink a couple of ships and so on. Create a battle plan. What are you going to do? What do you expect going to happen? Set any scouting, that's ship, based and air search rolls up if they haven't already been set up. Set any caps or airstrikes. So prepare for all that. Even if it's, you know, still nighttime, you can prepare this kind of stuff so that it will launch at first light. Set divisions to either manual control or AI control, and particularly set their role to whatever you like. And then finally, set any of the radii, sighting range, gunnery range, torpedo range, radar range, later missile range, so that you've got the best display that you can. And if you've done all of that, well, then you're going to be well prepared for battle. Here we are in uh, the mid-Baltic off the coast of Dangzig. There's Dangzig, there's Pilau, our nearby bases, which is great. So as you can see, there's a pile of minefields down uh, off the coast here. There are coastal batteries all along the coast of Pomerania and then across this spit of land, um, the Hell Peninsula, with one L. Uh, Pillows, uh, Pillau is over here, and you've got some uh, destroyers 
that are and merchant ships that are popping around and you've got two air bases so we're pleasantly close to our bases and wonderfully distant from the soviet bases so if we get into trouble we can go back to our bases and if they get into trouble uh, uh let me just go through my checklist over here so time of day it's just gone four o'clock in the afternoon we've got two hours 50 minutes so 170 minutes of battle time to play with in daylight and then another half hour in dusk and then it's night time it is by the way a 600 minute battle so that's okay the wind direction that my face is hiding is up into the northwest so smoke will be going down and if we had a carrier they would be heading towards the coast of sweden but we don't so we don't have to worry about that there are no flight restrictions and there are no sea state restrictions we zoom out further we can expect the soviet fleet to be very close by around about here and thinking about it i would imagine that the battle is going to turn and go up in that direction luckily we have liberal here so if it does go that way then that becomes our escape port for any damaged ships I can't think that the Soviets are going to do anything too exciting, so I can't really think they're going to go deeper into the Baltic or down towards uh, the coast. They could, in theory, try and escape between the island of Gotland here and Orland there, but I think the most likely is they are going to take us in that direction and then north, because that's their way home. If we have a look at the air search, let's just select us and go and look here. You can see that the game is already banning us in this direction. Actually, it was like 300 miles, <laughs> way over central Sweden. So I pulled it back to 110 miles, which is fine. Cap is medium, but I only have float planes, so that's really just a moot thing. Um, so yeah, they're going to arrive there. They're going to arrive pretty quickly. I have decided to, for the whole two float planes that I have available, to ready them. Um, so yeah, they're only fair pilots at the moment. So hopefully this will give them some better and I put them on a naval strike mission. See how that goes. So that could be a 500 pound bomb. I mean, it's worth a try. Let's go into the task force. So currently we have everything under AI control with the exception of this little teeny tiny destroyer here. I, I don't know why he's zooming around. So let's give him a role of support. He doesn't seem to be able to change formation. Let's make him follow one of the destroyers. Who would that be? So let's go for destroyer division four, because I suspect that is the oldest. We have the heavy cruisers, Neisenauer, Blücher, Lutzel, Scharnhorst. Scharnhorst being the most modern, so naturally at the back. We have the Graf Spey, our 16-inch gun battle cruiser. The Graf Stauffenberg and the Reichsgraf, our 15-inch battle cruisers, nicely in a line. They have the fourth and the third destroyers screening them. We have two light cruisers who are on, yep, scouting with a screening destroyer, uh, for the first destroyer division there. And I assume the second one there. If we have a look at radar, you can see that Leipzig 
the flag doesn't have radar, whereas obviously the Hamburg does have radar. And likewise, uh, Lubeck has radar, but Bremen doesn't. The three battle cruisers all have radar, and the four heavy cruisers all have radar. But as you can see, the radars, well, firstly, there's two type. I assume this inner one is type one and the outer one is second generation radar. But in any case, they're all less than the sighting range. So I'm not too fussed with radar. Gun ranges, they'll become interesting as soon as we enter action. So that's all of our little pre-battle checklist. So let's press the, uh, oops, you see, I forgot something, the game speed. Uh, let's press the button and see exactly how long it is before the Soviets turn up. Do I want, I'm gonna say yes and yes and yes and yes and boom. All right, so there we are. Could, by the way, pull for cap from, where is it, here we go. Request cap from land-based, so I will. I don't think the Soviets can get aircraft down this far other than perhaps their longest range patrol aircraft, but why risk it? Okay, we've sighted the enemy. Let's put everybody on to maximum speeds of 31 and the 27, car, oh, they're quite old. The armored cruisers, 31, and the battle cruisers will be 29 because the Graf Stauffenberg and the Reichstag, Reichsgraf failed to uh, meet their design speed rather disappointingly. So let's just inch it. So, okay, we've got a uh, Soviet heavy cruiser or light cruiser. Ah, I was just about to say, this might be one of those battles where none of it goes terribly well. Scouting has kind of done its job. And so the two light cruiser divisions need to redeploy from uh, scouting into a supporting role, protecting against destroyers and that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to change that. Uh, during the course of this battle, I'm going to stop it frequently uh, off camera and try and get some good gunnery data for part two of the gunnery guide that I did the other day because I've had some great feedback, but I just really need some extra data to add something more to the discussions that have been bubbling away down in the comments. To everybody who has commented on that, thank you very much. It's been fascinating. Okay, I fiddled with the rolls. I'm going to do a slightly daring maneuver, which is the faster armored cruisers are on the wrong side, so I want them to go this way supported by uh, these cruisers and i want the battle cruisers to go that way supported by these cruisers so a little bit of a crossroads the reason is that the battle cruisers have a slower speed at 29 knots so i want them to go north immediately because i think the general thrust of the battle is going to be northwards as the soviets retreat towards their base in general and if they don't start going north now they run the risk of losing ground and being left behind because of their slower speed i've set all the torpedo divisions to be in support and line ahead so you'll see them all change a little bit so it's a little bit of a clumsy maneuver but it feels like the wisest thing to do given the circumstances okay Let's push that on. I mean, obviously there won't be any collisions or anything clumsy like that. Honest. So, so far, only the light cruisers, but that's okay. Let's put the gun range on for the battle cruisers. Okay. We have a uh, ready to strike, so let's let's do that, shall we? Hmm. Reading aircraft. Two aircraft have mechanical issues. Brilliant. 
but nothing there. Yeah, nothing there. That's slightly annoying. Okay, the question is, who are these? Obviously, this is a light cruiser and some destroyers. And that might be everything, but who is this? So who's opened fire? The Graf Spey has opened fire. Now, because I'm interested in the gunnery, I might as well show you at the moment that the Graf Spey is shooting at a 0 0.77 and the Graf Stauffenburg at a 0 0.71 hit chance, which is terribly low. And so I am quite tempted to tell the division to hold fire because I do not want these precious heavy shells to be wasted on a mere light cruiser, which is, uh, well, let me just show you the, um, the table that I'm constructing. So this is the, uh, it's not the rate of fire, it's the fire table. For the grass spay, they're at 22,000 yards. Their basic hit chance is 189. And then they have pluses for crew quality, fire control, and tech. Quite nice ones for the tech. And minuses for the fact that the range is changing. They're coming towards us. We're going towards them. The target size, they're just like cruisers. The target aspect, they're pointing head on to us. We are near sighting range. Now, interesting that at 22,000 yards, sighting range is 27,000 at the moment. That's considered near um, with a with quite a big minus 40 modifier. The target, cowardly, is evading. It's in a loose formation, which is a, one of the fleet tactics technologies. Two ships are firing at the same target, and it's big guns at an agile target. They... Both, so this is the Graf Spey, the Graf Stauffenberg is at 22.7. Its basic hit chance is therefore a little bit lower. It does get a little plus from the commanding officer being a gunnery expert, but in other respects, it's the same. And if we look at rate of fire, the Graf Spey has a rate of fire of 0 0.41 and the Stauffenberg 0 0.36. Um, the difference accounted for by the fact that the crew quality of the Stauffenburg is less than the Graf Spey. The gunnery expertise of the commanding officer doesn't seem to apply. Anyhow, I'm building up this table uh, in order to gather evidence. So just for now, I'm going to hold fire because the hit chance just isn't worth it. And let's push on. You can see the two forces are starting to straighten themselves out. Let me have a look at the heavy cruisers. They're not currently shooting at anybody. Let me... Okay. Yeah, they're just outside main armament range. And here we've identified the Maxim Gorky, a 9x9 inch, very modern heavy cruiser. Mind you, really lightly protected. I mean, 3 inch belt, 2 inch deck, if that's the best that they have to offer, this is not going to go well other than by running away. So the ship ahead isn't identified. I suspect that could well be the sister ship, but we will see. If there's nothing else, then, you know, this is going to be a painful maneuver. So I'm going to turn the lighting range off because that's moot. There's the main guns. Actually, the main guns are beyond the sighting range, well, obviously for the grass spay. Um, okay, so let's just wait until... Actually, the main guns aren't necessary. The sighting range is. And here we are. And the second one is also a heavy cruiser, so it is the sister. And as you can see, they're starting to turn north. And I think that's all very wise. I'm going to take the hold fire off and see if they take the hint. And um, yeah, go after the two Maxim Gorky heavy cruisers. My own heavy cruisers are going to start to 
uh, turned ever so slightly by a point or two northwards. They're not firing. The battle cruisers are firing at the right target. And, you know, in fairness, a 2% for the Graf Spey at 22.800 yards is not too bad. You can see the Ragsgraf with only a 1% hint chance. Half of that of the Graf Spey is struggling a bit. The crew quality isn't as good relative to the target. The target is changing, is turning, and the Graf, Ragsgraf appears in relative motion turning as well. So yeah, that's um, putting that off. And it's just that little bit further, so it has a bigger disadvantage with being near sighting range. Really, I mean... It really slows the battle to have to constantly check these gunnery factors, but it's also fascinating. Let's proceed. Obviously, once you've uh, had a little save, um, it loses all the gunnery scores and pretends it has no idea who you are or what's happening. Just going to move the cruisers in a more northerly direction and bring the Battle cruisers slightly over. I want to try and capture them in the uh, jaws of my force. And there go the battle cruisers opening fire again. Let's just check their stats. So they're managing 1.8, 2.17, 1.63. .1 so kind of classic 2 percent ish kind of things. Even though their range is only around about 20,000, a bit under, a bit over. You notice here that the uh, Maxim Gorky, I assume the first one, has been hit by a 16 uh, inch gun, so that won't be doing it a power of good. And the Soviets are very wisely turning away. I'm going to bring the heavy cruisers into a corresponding direction because they'll be masking each other and keep on with the battle cruisers in the same direction. Now, this is all progressing into a relatively stately battle. If I was the Soviet commander, I'd be getting these destroyers and loosing them off to try and... Um, Put me off my aim and maybe discourage me to respect the torpedo but i don't think anyone is at torpedo risk at the moment okay the lutzau has started to straddle the maxim gorky hit by a 15 inch gun as well and the grass spay is straddling them this is and a 16 inch gun. This is going to be over relatively quickly, I think. Let's just see if they're reporting any damage, a light damage. And no. I mean, given that their armor schemes are pretty poor, uh, Eisenhower has taken a uh, hit. Let's see if that's going to put it off his stride. No, it's only reporting 4%. Just go in and. Have a little, just one medium hit. Uh, float plane launch delayed, or at top hit from a nine inch gun at just a smidge under 15,000 yards. Nothing to worry about, chaps. Just maybe your ears are a bit ringing. Lutzow continues to straddle, even though it is suffering from smoke interference, which puts its. Um, you go to hit chance. Well, actually, that's improved. So the smoke interference here has only gone down to minus 20. Before it was minus 60, I noticed. Interesting. Still all less than 2% hit chances. So in my um, estimate for the effectiveness of guns at 25,000 at 2%, I think I was erring on the uh, the generous side. Let's go have a look at the battle cruisers. Maybe they're bigger guns. They are only at 16, 16, 8, and 18.3, and they're getting fives and fours percents and nearly two and a half percents. That's much more interesting. 
going to correct the course of the cruisers. And that's some 8 inch guns from Neisnauer against the light cruiser. And information's ready. I'm, you know, I'm going to launch this notional strike um, just as an experiment as much as anything else. But I can't imagine that it's um, anything but a slight nuisance. That's annoying. Launch the strike. And they're off. The wing. Well, ooh, the graphs have just launched uh, the float planes and graph space slows down for float plane recovery. Really? I mean, this obviously is why some people deprecate the use of float planes, particularly on capital ships. And yeah, I can sort of see why. And Maxim Gorky, or one of them, is straddling the Blucha which is second in line amongst the heavy cruisers. Just looking at the percentage, they've all gone down slightly as the range. Actually, the range is pretty much the same. And Lutzel hits the Maxim Gorky. The Neisenauer takes a couple of hits. Just going to straighten out the Neisenauer a bit. I do believe that there aren't any other Soviet ships about. I don't think this is the scouting group and that there's a whole pile of battle cruisers nearby. And a 15 inch gun hit from the Reichsgraf. And another from the Reichsgraf, and another from the Graf Spey. Let's just see who they are firing at. Yeah, they're firing at separate ones. I'm going to put the German heavy cruisers in that direction. Ships are jumbling up a bit over here. I don't know why these guys are turning. It's uh, spoiling their aim, whatever they're doing. I didn't see any float plane nonsense from them. Yeah, they seem to be going a very independent course from the Graf Spey. Mm, nope. Well, let's hope they decide to stop mucking about soon. Let's check that the um, Grafenburg hasn't, well, hasn't been hit by anything, so it shouldn't um, <laughs> radar disabled by their own guns. Oopsie! Um, so no, there's no reports as to why they are both mucking about. No hits on either of them. Hmm. Well, I just hope and expect that they'll sort themselves out shortly. Hopefully they're going to just do a big loop. Well, now the <laughs> now the Ragscraft is breaking to starboard turn, whilst the Graf Stauffenberg is doing a port turn, and the Graf Spey is just noodling away. That was the one that was supposed to be retrieving the float planes. That's the one that I would have thought would have um, done something different, but no. And unsurprisingly, it's ruined their aim. Well, the Graf Spey, 3.77, is fine, but the other two, their aim is all over the place. You just can't, you know, twist and turn like you're a destroyer and expect to remain a good, proficient gun platform. Graf Spey has a turret drammed. Okay, these two seem to have straightened themselves out. I'm going to drop the maximum speed by two in order to give these two guys a bit of wiggle room to gather themselves up and uh, rejoin and stop mucking about. 
the Staffenburg's firing is a lot less accurate, even though it's straighted itself out, because it's quite near to its sighting range at 24 and a bit thousand yards. I'm going to bring the range down a little bit because we should be hitting more. You know, we've got four or five percent accuracy. I know that's one shell in every 20, but then when you're loosing off nine shells or so, that ought to be easy. And these guys are sailing pretty straight. Lucas hit the light cruiser, which is good. You can see these two starting to form up. Also starting to speed up because obviously those big turns will have slowed them down. They're still at 22 knots. They're still behind the Graf Spey. 15 inch gun hits. I'm going to have to speed them up in a moment because. Okay, two hits from the Graf Spey because the Graf Spey is going slow ish, whereas I imagine these guys are going much faster. I mean, it says they're only going 20 knots, but I don't believe it. Otherwise, I would be catching them up. So I'm going to push back up to 29 knots. That does give you a minus 10 vibration for high speed. You know, the optics of shell ships shaking away at high speed. Another 15 inch. I mean, fair play to a bunch of ships with really light armor. They have, um, you know, three inch belt, four inch turrets. They've been chewing up quite a few very heavy shells. I'm somewhat surprised that one of them hasn't sunk, blown up, had a critical hit that's made its speed drop out or whatever else. Okay, this rear one is slow. In fact, they're both slowing down now. Which means I can bring the grass bay back down to 27 and reduce any speed penalties. I can straighten out the heavy cruisers. They're at, yeah, around about 14, 15,000 yards. Still comparatively low hit chances. Well, I suppose three and a half, four is pretty good for the Blucher and the Lutzel. 2% for the Scharnhorst and 2% effectively for the Nizau. Although the Nizau is firing against the light cruiser and there will be small target negative modifiers for the light cruiser. Okay, let's just zoom in a little bit here. The range for the Grass Spay is down to 11,000. I don't think we necessarily have to get any closer. So I'm going to go north of that. And I'm going to take these off AI control and send them off in this direction in order to get them within some sort of torpedo firing. Because it looks like some of these ships should really be finished off. So one of the Maxim Gorkis has stopped. And the other is reporting light damage. Here's the heavy cruisers. Now the Russian destroyers have finally woken up. So rather than going in for a torpedo attack here, I'm going to bring these around. I might bring these off control and send them in. So that's already made the Russians think twice about it. And I might make the German ships do a lazy circle. I don't want to turn into the Russian destroyers, so I'm going to have to turn away. I'm going to have to turn because I'm going off to the north, and these guys are hammering away towards the west. Uh, here's my heavy cruisers that have caught up with them. So shortly, I'm going to get them to tail round. Well, let's see what a float plane can do to decide the battle. Carry on. Little 
rubbish the speed, but that's okay. So these destroyers have comprehensively chased off those destroyers, which is nice. And this Maxim Gorking, Gorky, I'm just going to do that a little bit more and bring the grass space south. The destroyers are loosing off their own torpedoes. Yeah, that looks fine. And the Maxim Gorky here seems to be, so this one seems to be taking a bit of a pounding. The battleships are still loosing away at that one. Might tell it to stop because, you know, honestly, hold fire for 10 minutes. It's probably just wasting ammunition, particularly with these two guys doing loop de loop or whatever it is that they think they're doing. These, yep, they're well within range. I don't know what these two are doing. So, uh, one of them's being torpedoed. I don't think it's probably the interesting one. Let's bring these destroyers that have done a sterling job protecting the battle cruisers. Let's bring them down. Oh. One of ours is hit. I'm going to send these rounds a little bit more. I'm going to bring these. Bathquizzes, actually, I'm not going to steer them too close because I think both of the Maxim Gorkis, the one here and the one here, are out of action. Are like cruisers. I can sort that out perfectly easily. I'm just looking for the Soviet CA. Oh, sorry, CL. Where have you gone? Ah, it's here under what quite a lot of smoke. So yes, uh, Light Cruise is doing a good job and carry on. Now, before I get a rush of blood to the head, important to remember what the time is. Okay, so we've got 55 minutes of daytime. I see absolutely no reason to extend this beyond that. I'm just going to turn, I'm going to get them to turn together towards the stationary Maxim Gorky. There seems to be, actually, I'm going to get them to turn away. Seems to be a lot of torpedoes in the water, and I think they could all... Indeed, there you go. Oops. So, if we lose a couple of destroyers, Shame, but you know, that's fine. So I think it's time really to disengage the heavy ships. I don't think there's much more they need to do. So let's go there and let's drop the speed of the battle cruisers down to 20. Keep the heavy cruisers going fast. We're going to drop their speed a little bit. If we can get this little light cruiser, that would be fab. That's my last task. And then everybody else can just relax. No. Excellent. There you go. And another torpedo. And another. Well, that's that sorted. It's just a question of can they get this light cruiser? Let's tell them to target the light cruiser rather than pointlessly targeting the um, stricken Maxim Gorky. I'm going to take the battle cruisers down to cruising speed. I'm going to bring the 
heavy cruisers down to 20 and send them in the same direction. Where Where is home? Oh yeah, it's down there. That's okay. And just focus on this chap. Whoops, well, there you go. Farewell, one of the Maxim Gorkies. So, just a heavy damage on fire, five knots. So we just need it to be finished off. Stop bullying those wrecked ships. Oh, in fact, it has stopped. Let's just see what's happening here. Yep, they've all got torpedoes, so uh, feel free to torpedo. Oh, that's a hopeless miss. But that looks like it should hit. Okay. okay I'm going to zoom out now. And send them properly home in this direction. No one's stopping to recover their float planes just at the moment. And the light cruiser is a gunner. That's all we need, really. Interesting that there were effectively three points of hit chance. There was the poor the, you know, under two. There was uh, the medium, around about 2%, and there was the good, which is up around 4.5%, primarily determined by range. Let's see them all swarm. There's nighttime. Yeah, don't want to be, don't want to be hanging around in the middle of the night. Done a day's job. Well, an afternoon's job, really. Ever so sad, ever so sad that the Russian battleships, as ever, didn't put an appearance in. Yeah, uh, I can't imagine what Russian fleet morale must be looking like. Let's them, let's them go to Pilau, shall we? That all seems like a nice... Nice nearby naval base. There we all go. For one destroyer loss, it'd be nice if the second destroyer were to survive. Boom. And there we all go. And just about to run out of time with our solitary destroyer tootling along. Did they make it? Yes, they did. So, two heavy cruisers, one light cruiser executed light damage on one of our battle cruisers. That's interesting. 75,000 points to 7,000. Let's look at the ship details. Oh, just checking. Nope, there were no other heavy ships around. So... Molotov and Maxim Gorky both took 31,740 points of damage, so that's all of the damage they can absorb. The light cruiser took on 10,000. Oh, they managed to knock off one of our merchant ships whilst we weren't noticing. The Graf Spey took a tiny bit of bad damage too, so let's let's see what that was about. So one medium hit. So that, actually that's quite useful to know that one medium hit equals 1,987 points. I'll just go through this and see if there's a, a recognizable pattern so that I can, you know, do some maths on these things. Anything on the other two? So the other two battle cruisers had no damage. Interesting, the average hit chances given here. 
Oh, it's a hit percentage. So the Graf Stauffenburg had one hit, but only two, 0 0.27, whereas the Reichsgraf had 1.24. And the Graf Spey itself had 2.73. So yeah, interesting. I'll just to work out this a little bit more, because obviously this gives you the actual number of hits against the actual number of shell fired. Uh, having a little look of this, I've recorded some of these for a later video, but the hit percentage, four and 0.36 for Leipzig, 3.5 for Hamburg, just over 2.5 for Lutzau, under 2 for Blücher, 2.7 for Graf Spey, 1.8 for Scharnhorst, 1.5 for Neisenauer, 1.24, one and a quarter for Reichsgraf. Uh, these are, you know, pretty poor, really, for the fact that visibility was fine. The range wasn't excessive. There's was no problem with the C state. Actually, I say that, but actually C state limits ship speed. But um, yeah, on the whole, it wasn't a difficult battle. And the Soviets complied by sailing a relatively straight, forward, normal, good gunnery course. Strange they were firing HE. Looking at the damage, for example, if we go to the Eisenhower and have a look at its logs, we can see that um, it got hit by an HE there, which hit the lower edge of the belt, and then a superstructure, which uh, perforated the uptakes and started a small fire that was put out pretty quickly in a, yeah, in a matter of a minute and a bit or under. So there we go. I almost feel guilty for uh, executing a perfectly nice, innocent Soviet couple of um, heavy cruisers that had only just entered service. But the two prestige points are sweet and a few victory points, nothing major, but I'll, I'll go with that. And at least it gave my battle cruisers a bit of a runaround, a bit of experience. So new U-boats, new discovery, another new discovery, another new to see. This is making up for last year's very, very poor. No, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with our patrol. We've sunk one of theirs. They've sunk one of ours. We are well on the way to blockading them. So a bit of a shame that the fact that they're blockaded hasn't made them come out and fight more. But there you go. Let's just check the news. More Corvettes laid down. Another heavy cruiser <laughs> laid down. Two years to build it. Nothing else particularly to worry about. Uh, so one of our captains has uh, shown himself to be above average ability. So hooray for you, captains of the sea top. Okay. And there we go. Let's just have a look at the relations. We put the values on. American tensions have gone down, which is good. Liking that. France and Britain still much higher than I would um, ideally wish and against Italy as well, my unwished for allies. I'm going to close that and yeah, call this episode to a close. Thanks very much for watching and thank you for being so patient before getting any kind of battle at all. See you next time.